How you doing guys? Welcome to another episode. This is Topic 13, Volume 2, Coloured Compounds, where we look at some d-orbital splitting and why are things coloured. Let's do it. So, Topic 13, Volume 2, Coloured Compounds. We look specifically at d-orbitals and we need to address why things are coloured. IB understandings, we need to talk about some d-orbital splitting and how that affects the colour. We talk about what is absorbed by these complexes and how that relates to the d orbitals. We also talk about how the absorption is the complement of what is reflected or what is absorbed. Make sure you check out the text ref, page 130, 134. Okay, so compounds of groups 1, 2 and 13, the aluminiums group, are typically white. And same as the compounds of zinc, which we didn't classify as a transition metal. One of the properties of transition metals is that they form coloured compounds and there's a number of examples in those volumetric flasks on the left. You're given a colour wheel in the IB, page 15 of the data book, so you don't have to remember the complementary colours um, or the colour wheel. You just need to make sure you know how to use it. For, so for example, Neymar's jumper on the left there, it's yellow, so it's reflecting yellow light. What's the opposite of yellow? Well, that's violet. So that means that that shirt is absorbing violet light and reflecting yellow light. That's why we see it as yellow, but it's absorbing the violet colored light. If we jump down to the bottom, I've just got a number of different transition metal complexes, and we're just gonna quickly go over the coordination number. So in the first one, we have six water ligands around the iron iron so that's an octahedral complex the oxidation number on the iron would be plus three because water is a neutral ligand this one the copper chloride well that's got a coordination number of four now its shape could be tetrahedral could be square planar it's probably going to be tetrahedral that's the more common one the oxidation state where well, we have four chlorides chlorides are negative overall the ligand has a charge of minus two so it must be plus two Moving down a bit further, we can have a look at the copper. The copper has a coordination number of 6. Um, it will have a 2 plus charge, so it has an oxidation state of plus 2. 6 ligands is our octahedral. So why are transition metal complexes coloured? So when a metal atom is involved in bonding, the d orbitals typically split into 3 and 2. So we have 3d orbitals at a lower energy level and 2d orbitals at a higher energy level. Here we have the copper 2 plus ion and we'll go in and draw the electron configuration using the orbital diagram. So we have one electron that is unpaired. When it combines with chloride ligands, those d orbitals split into 3 at a lower energy and 2 at a higher energy. So those two at a higher energy, well they're the ones that interact with the light. So going in and filling in our electron orbit diagram, we'll see that we have one unpaired electron in the higher energy d orbital. And what will happen is if this compound absorbs light, one of the electrons from the lower orbital will absorb the light and be promoted to a higher energy orbit. It absorbs the light, becomes excited, and then as it releases the light, it releases light of its specific wavelength, which we see as the color that is released. So here we have our copper two plus complex. It's a yellow color. So that means it's reflecting yellow light or it's releasing yellow light. Yellow is over there in the color wheel. What is the complementary color to yellow? Well, just like Neymar's shirt before, it's violet. So what that means is that this complex is absorbing violet light, that electron is being promoted into a higher energy level, and then it's releasing light of a yellow wavelength, or it is reflecting light of a yellow wavelength. There are three factors that can affect the color of a transition metal complex. The identity of the metal ion, the ligand, and the oxidation state. In this first one, we've got two different metals but they have the same electron configuration. But the identity of the metal can affect the color. So on the left we have manganese 2 complex, and on the right we have an iron 3 complex, both with the same electron configuration. Remember the d orbital splits into a 3 and a 2, 
So if I go in and put the electrons in, they're all unpaired, and we have two unpaired electrons in that higher energy orbital. We can see that it absorbs at 525, which means it reflects light of a specific wavelength. Now if it's absorbing at 525, that's in the green region of the, of the spectrum. So that means it's releasing light um, that is opposite on the color wheel. So it's absorbing green. And it appears pink because it is reflecting pink. With the ion, the iron, we have 3D5, same electron configuration. So it's got one electron in each of its orbitals. And it absorbs light of a smaller wavelength or more energy at 500 nanometers. So it's absorbing higher frequency light. So on our color wheel, we can see that that is just on the inside of the manganese, which means that it is also reflecting light of a slightly bigger, a slightly smaller wavelength, slightly more energy. And it appears more red rather than more pink. So depending upon the metal ion that you have in your complex will depend very much on the color. If we want, need to talk about the identity of the ligand, we have this series in the data book called a spectrochemical series. And it basically tells us which ligands have the lowest energy splitting and which have the highest energy splitting. So the iodide ligand has the lowest energy splitting, while the CN, the cyanide ligand, has the highest energy splitting. And what that means is the further along that series you go, the bigger the split between those 3D orbitals and the two higher energy D orbitals. So if we have a look on the OH side, there's a smaller difference between the 3 and the 2, and with the NH3 we have a bigger difference between the 3 and the 2. So there's less splitting with ligands of lower energy and more splitting with ligands of higher energy. So if we're looking at ligands with less splitting, that means they're going to absorb light of a smaller wavelength, so the red to the yellow, whereas the higher energy ligands, they're going to absorb energy of a larger, a smaller wavelength, more energy. So we're looking at a different part of the color wheel. The greater the splitting, the more energy that needs to be absorbed, which means the greater the frequency of light. If we need to talk about the oxidation state, generally the greater the oxidation state, the greater the split between those d orbitals. So here we have two chromium complexes. The charge on the metal ion for the green one is plus two. The charge on the metal ion for the blue one is plus three. Because we've got water ligands, the oxidation state is plus two and plus three. And if we're looking at a green compound, then that absorbs in the red region of the spectrum. If we have a blue colored compound, that's absorbing in the orange region of the spectrum. From that, we can see that the green one absorbs energy of less energy, whereas the blue one absorbs higher energy, which means it must have a greater splitting between those d orbitals. So here's a typical kind of question. A solution of FeCn6 3 minus is red, an iron complex. We need to deduce the color of the light that is being absorbed by the solution. We need to state the oxidation state. And then they've treated it with, with NH3 and that's changed the color. So what can cause that to happen? So for A, if the solution is red, that must mean that it is absorbing light in the green area of the spectrum. So Red is what is being reflected, so it must be absorbing green light. For B, if we need to state the oxidation state on the iron complex, well we know that CN is a negatively charged ligand. We have six of them and the overall charge is three minus, so the iron must be a three plus charged cation. When we talk about C, when we treat the solution with NH3, it causes the color change from red to yellow. 
So that means that it is now reflecting yellow light, so it must be absorbing violet light. Now violet light has more energy than yellow light, so that means that we've caused more splitting between those d orbitals. So the NH3 causes the d orbitals to split so that violet light is being absorbed by the solution. Violet light has more energy than green light, which means there must be greater splitting between the three d orbitals and the two d orbitals. Now that kind of is a little bit different to the spectrochemical series, but because this is a specific type of ligand, then maybe it has a different type of interaction. The main idea here is that the NH3 has come in and substituted with the CN6 and that has changed the colour, so there must be a change in the d orbital splitting. It could either be more or it could be less. Using the colour wheel we can determine if it is a bigger split or a smaller split. So volume two, transition metals, some top tips, make sure you use the color wheel and the greater the splitting, the greater the energy of light absorbed. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you next time.